Coming up, we go to Infinity and Beyond with a new Asus Transformer Prime. We've got microphones for podcasters, earbuds, headphones, and one big ass watch. It's time to watch before you buy. Netcasts you love from people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by Stamps.com. Start using your time more effectively with Stamps.com. Use Stamps.com to buy and print real U.S. postage the instant you need it right from your desk. For our special offer, visit Stamps.com, click the radio microphone, and use Before You Buy. And buy Audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, visit AudiblePodcast.com slash Before You Buy. Before you buy, ladies and gentlemen, this is the show where we review new products using the same old Twit staff. <laughs> Actually, we've got some new people on this show. We're going to start off with one of our favorites from the great show TNT, Jason Howell. He's the producer and editor of TNT and a, uh, the welcome fourth person on the show. Hey, Jason, how are you? Good, Good to how see you. Doing, Leo? You've been craving a chance to review this, <laughs> and I did. Yes, uh, I've never actually had a chance to uh, spend a lot of time with any of ASUS's Transformer tablets. They've had quite a few over the past year. This is their latest. It's the Transformer Pad Infinity. It's actually the the tablet as well as the mobile dock, which is what you see Ooh. right there. Well, let's take a look uh, at your review. Fancy. Yep. Jason Howell and I'm here with the Asus Transformer Pad Infinity. I actually have the tablet as well as the mobile dock accessory that I'm going to review. Let's take a quick look at the specs. It is running NVIDIA's new Tegra 3 quad-core T33 processor at 1.6 gigahertz with 1 gig of RAM. It has a 1920 by 1200 IPS plus LED backlit display, micro SD card slot, micro HDMI, 2 megapixel front facing camera, an 8 megapixel rear facing camera with LED flash that's capable of 1080p video, Wi Fi, Bluetooth, gyroscope, accelerometer, and GPS antennas. No mobile carrier supports, so keep that in mind. And finally, it's running Android 4.0.3 ice cream sandwich. One other thing to note, it actually comes in this color, which is amethyst gray. You can also get it in a champagne gold color if you so choose. Let's take a look at the design. I'll take it out of the dock for a second here. It's mostly aluminum unibody design. Gives it a really nice solid feel uh, with a very small uh, plastic strip up at the top, which supposedly improves GPS signal due to an issue in previous uh, versions with such a thing. It's comfortably thin. It actually better the new iPad on that front and it's very light to hold to boot. Now my one issue is that it has the single speaker down here at the bottom corner and when you're gaming or holding it for a movie like this you end up cupping the speaker and kind of blocking some of the audio so it can flange a little bit. Maybe they should have placed it in a little bit better spot since you're more likely to hold it like this when used. Now as far as the display it's actually a very impressive looking display. Uh, definitely the best 10 inch Android tablet display I've seen to date. There's little to no discernible pixels when you really look up close on it you can hardly see them. It's extremely bright. It has the IPS plus mode which I believe it's in right now, if I deactivate it, it's on full brightness without IPS Plus. And then if you're outside, you just hit that and you get that extra boost. The IPS gives you wonderful viewing angles, as you can see. The camera on the front is a two megapixel front facing camera. It's, it's pretty good uh, when it gets focused. I had some focus issues on it where it would focus in behind me and trying to have a hard time catching that focal point. The rear facing camera is also good, but it's a little bit washed out for my taste. I prefer a little bit more saturation than what I was getting out of here. Uh, but overall, the, the pictures were a combination of, you know, pretty detailed to somewhat flat on the color spectrum. And HD video recorded on the rear facing camera. Maybe a little bit of frame skipping issues there, but overall, it looked pretty decent. 
Now maneuvering the OS has uh, actually seemed very smooth. Um, so going into your app tray and skipping around the OS, things were fluid. It's definitely a workhorse and it's great at doing things like multitasking. It's also great at gaming. Uh, the body does get hot, however, during uh, high processor intensive things, right over on this side of the tablet, it would heat up. So keep that in mind. Now the Transformer Pad Infinity also includes some of ASUS's software. They have their WaveShare UI overlay, which is very minimal. Really, the, one of the only places you truly see it is in the notification panel. You have these toggle buttons, and that's actually a pretty good improvement. Now the battery inside this device has to be pretty chunky because it's doing a lot. And thankfully, they've packed a 25 watt hour battery that actually packs a nice punch. It's needed to serve those power hungry specs. Uh, it has excellent battery efficiency, especially since ASUS included three power efficiency modes if you go into the notification toggle. And finally, if you want to add extra battery efficiency to your use, add another 19.5 watt hour battery to the entire equation. And that's thanks to the mobile dock, which has a battery built into it. It's $150 for this. It's an extra accessory. It has a built-in SD card and USB ports for expandability. All in all, I'd say if you're getting one, you should get both. Uh, I, I highly recommend that. So let's take a quick look at the pros. The display is beautiful, even in highlight situations. Its performance, I mean, it performs alongside the best Android tablets right now. And the mobile dock accessory capability is a major differentiator and takes this tablet to a new level. Now the cons, the camera on the front as well as the back, the pictures tend to be a bit washed out. Uh, it's only Wi-Fi, so if you need that mobile network support, you're not gonna find it here. And the speaker is placed somewhat poorly on this device, but overall, it's really kind of reaching. It's hard to find many faults with this tablet. Uh, I absolutely recommend it as a buy. This is the best 10 inch Android tablet that I've played with to date. And with the optional uh, mobile dock keyboard accessory, people looking for an Android tablet that can act as a laptop, really you can't find anything better than the ASUS Transformer Pad Infinity. You can catch my reviews on All About Android at twit.tv slash AAA. And thank you so much for checking out my review of the ASUS Transformer Pad Infinity. Thank you, Jason. So the full review is on YouTube if you want to look, youtube.com slash twit. Yeah. You can find it in the in the before you buy kind of full reviews playlist. It's, like and and it's about two and a half longer. minutes yeah. longer, yeah. Now, uh, I'm wondering, Asus makes the Nexus 7, which I really love. That yep. comes with Jelly Bean, the latest version of Android. Mm -hmm. What version of Android's on here? Well, this is this is ice cream sandwich. Uh, Asus the previous has, version. Yes. Asus has said that Jelly Bean is to come out soon. And actually, um, I mentioned it in the longer review, um, you after getting used to the improvements of Jelly Bean with the butter enhancements, you definitely see it. Like this was one of my first times going back to a tablet with ice cream sandwich and you see a little bit of that frame skipping. So it, it'll be a, a, a very nice upgrade once it comes through. A Hopefully good product soon. that can only get better exactly. with, with, with uh, Jelly Bean. Yeah. Boy, it's a gorgeous screen. I, yeah, you know, really people is. probably can't tell on, on camera, but it is about the nicest screen I've seen. Yeah, really it's just super rest. bright, just very, very punchy. I like Make it. me want it. Thank you, Jason. Right, Jason Hell, all about Android. On the Twit Network and, of course, TNT. We're going to take a walk. But while we do, I want to mention a little bit one of our sponsors, Stamps.com. There it is, the Stamps.com scale, the hotly contested, the fought-after Stamps.com scale. We actually ended up getting two Stamps.com accounts just so we didn't have to share the scale. Stamps.com is awesome. It lets you buy and print official U.S. postage from your computer, your printer. You don't need any special inks. You don't need a uh, postage meter. You just need Stamps.com. You never have to go to the post office again. Not only do you get the scale, USB scale, so you plop the letter or the package on there. The software prints out exactly the right postage. If you want, you can print directly on the envelope, which makes it look very professional. And, of course, then the postal carrier comes and they pick it up. You don't have to bring the package to the post office. You don't have to go buy stamps. You don't even have to go buy international mailing orders, things like that. And if you're an eBay or Amazon seller, you'll love it because the software just takes the data for the buyer puts it in there, prints out the right envelope, prints out the mailing label, everything you need. You paste it right on there. Mailman comes and gets it, and you're, you're good to go. Really a time saver, a money saver, too, because Stamps.com has discounts you can't get at the post office. I want you to try Stamps.com. We've got a special no-risk trial just for you. Visit Stamps.com. Don't You see it says $80. Don't do that. Click the radio microphone in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, and you're going to enter before you buy as the offer code 
Once you do that, that $80 offer turns into $110. Oh, my goodness. $110 bonus offer. That's actually more uh, postage coupons, $55 in free postage coupons, plus the scale. You only pay shipping and handling for that. It's about 5 bucks, plus a kit of supplies, plus a month's uh, trial subscription to Stamps.com. It really is a great deal. I want you to try it. If you don't like it, no, no sweat. But if you do, you can thank me later. This is going to save you so much time and so much money. Stamps.com. Remember the offer code before you buy. Now, let's walk over and say hi to Robert Balliser. Father Robert is the host of This Week in Enterprise Tech, uh, one of the new shows on uh, Twitter. We really love having you around. It's so great to have your enterprise expertise. But you're also a podcaster. I am. I started off as a YouTube podcaster, so that's my roots. Got a couple of Audio-Technica microphones uh, we're going to try out. Let's take a look at the video. I'm Father Robert Balliser, the digital Jesuit, host of Twiet, this week in Enterprise Tech on the Twit Network. I'm taking a look at two microphones built specifically for podcasters. These are the Audio-Technica AT2020 and ATR2500. First-time podcasters may be tempted to use earbud microphones for recording. After all, they come with every piece of mobile gear, and the quality is pretty decent, right? It just drives me crazy. People um, use those iPhone headsets, and they it even, they, and they can't hear it, but they, it rattles. It, a, the quality is terrible, and B, it rattles. Now that we've established that anyone using earbud microphones for a podcast should be flogged, let's take a look at the mics that Audio Technica offers for podcasters. The AT2020 USB and ATR2500 are side address condenser microphones from Audio Technica that have been designed, built, and priced for the beginning podcaster or the content creator on the go. On the surface, the two mics look similar. Both mics have USB ports that connect them directly to your laptop or desktop. Both are compatible with Mac and PC. Both use low mass diaphragm condenser elements. Both have 16 bit analog to digital converters that sample at either 44.1 or 48 kilohertz. Both feature a cardioid pickup pattern. Both have LED lights to indicate when the mics are live. Both use standard threading so the mics can be easily mounted on their included tripods or any conventional microphone stand. Both are roughly the same size and weight, just a skosh over 12 ounces. At $60 to $80, the ATR2500 is the lower price sibling of the pair. Audio Technica advertises a frequency response of 30 to 15,000 hertz decent for podcasting and average field work. In addition to the microphone itself, Audio-Technica has included a mic mount, USB cable, and a tripod stand. The ATR2500 has a built-in headphone jack with volume control buttons on the front, a feature that podcasters will like since it gives direct monitor functionality with zero delay in the audio feedback. The AT2020 USB is priced between $110 and $150. Gone are the plastic buttons and headphone jack in favor of a solid metal construction. It also expands the frequency range down to 20 Hz and up to 16,000. The AT2020 also includes a far stronger thread adapter and tripod, as well as a carrying case that houses all the bits you need to make it work. Using either microphone is easy, with a single USB cable providing both connectivity and power. Windows 7 and Mac OS X immediately recognize either Audio-Technica mic as an audio recording device. Sound quality on both mics is excellent, with clean and clear mids, especially for vocals. The wider frequency response of the 2020 gives it higher highs and lower lows, thereby making it usable for field recording of all types. But for podcasting, either mic is a solid choice. I could go on about the quality of the 2020 and the 2500, but instead I'll point out that this review was filmed with these mics in this audio nightmare of a room, with this hard echo producing wall, this noisy laptop, and this fan behind me. If I had tried to film this using earbuds, this is what it would have sounded like. The first pro has to be the USB interface. It's simple, easy to install, easy to maintain. Because it's USB, it means that you don't have to worry about things like a preamp or a switch or a mixing board or a XLR to USB adapter. That's all built into the body of the microphone, which essentially makes this a miniature studio for you on the go. The other thing about the USB interface is that it's digital all the way from the microphone into your computer. People used to have to worry about the RF interference that could be generated by a laptop or a desktop adding pops and buzzes and whines to their sound. Because it's digital all the way in, you don't have to worry about that. Now let's talk about quality. These two mics 
are fantastic. I mean, for what you pay for them, they are top of the line. The ATR2500 sounds rich, and it's clean and clear, and vocals are just really easy to distinguish. The AT2020 is in another class entirely. I think this is the new gold standard for condenser microphones in this price range. In fact, it's favorable to the Shure SM58 from the previous generation. Looking at the cons, there's really only one, and it's really only for the ATR2500. That is that it feels a little cheap. It's not a bad microphone, it's just that the tripod feels a little bit plasticky, and the adapter feels like it's, it could break after a couple of uses. The microphone itself is really, really good, and I like the fact that they included this interface for the headphones. But the problem is, when I look at the AT2020, well, I think I want to spend a little bit more to get the higher quality. So, buy, try, don't buy? For the 2020, it's a no-brainer. Buy it. Even if you don't want the USB interface, look for the XLR interface, which runs about 100 bucks, and get that. You can't go wrong. You'll be really happy for the quality, price, performance. For the ATR2500, I'd say it's a try. Not again, because it's a bad mic, but because I think most people will find that they'd want to spend a little bit more and get the top of the line in USB podcasting mics. This has been the Audio-Technica AT2020 and ATR2500. You're going to think this is crazy. There's one question, good review, and I appreciate it. And I do think Audio-Technica makes great pro gear, so I imagine they make great uh, microphones uh, for the podcast market. But I have to say, I always have problems, especially with microphones. Do I speak into the end? Do I speak into the side? Which Right, yeah, these are all side address. So, you, so, so don't be fooled. You right. speak into the front. And how about pee popping? Uh, yeah, this has a good wind protector, but if you're going to want to get a pop filter. Okay. All right. And you can buy them and you, you put it in front of, you know, you've exactly. seen the nylon exactly. stockings in front of it. And stuff. Right. But boy, that's great. That'll really improve uh, a lot of the sound of podcasts. They're perfect for first time podcasters. Yeah, that's I great. mean, if you want something that sounds good, but uh, isn't that expensive it won't and break it's really the easy to hook up, that's yeah. what these are for. Thank you, Robert. Appreciate it. We'll catch this week in Enterprise Tech, 12 noon on Mondays, 3 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, 1900 UTC uh, on Twit, and of course, after the fact, you can get it on demand. And if you're in IT or enterprise, or you know, even if you're just a geek and you want to see how the big guys solve the big problems, some of the same problems we have Wi Fi congestion, cloud storage, and all that, it's really a fun show. We're there things. every week. Yeah, thank you, Robert. Really appreciate it. Robert Balliser, now we're going to take a walk over to the living room where John is going to have a little review for me uh, on uh, some new earphones from C Crane. But before we do, let me talk a little bit about what you might use those earphones uh, for audible.com, the audio bookstore. I love, I became a member in 2001. I was, when I was commuting back and forth to Tech TV, I was listening to cassettes. I would have a box of cassettes on the seat, but you'd only get 30 days. If the cassette broke, you'd have to mail it back. They'd send you a new one. Audible was a lifesaver. I could pick a book, download it, have it on my iPod before I got in the car within minutes. And now iPod, iPhone, Android phones, Windows phones, they've got an iP uh, Audible app for all three that works so great. Your whole library is on there. You can download even uh, as you're in the car. You don't have to even, you know, download before you get on the road. And I'll tell you, I will not travel without my audio books. Uh, right now, just finishing Stephen King's The Stand. I've got a lot of great choices for my next book, but i got to tell you, I think it's going to be Daniel Suarez's Kill Decision. I've listened to the first chapter, and I'm already grabbed. He wrote Freedom and uh, Demon. You can get those on Audible as well. Kill Decision, uh, we're going to interview Daniel on Triangulation on Wednesday, and I'm just so excited to get to talk to him once again. He's a really nice guy and a great writer. If you're looking for a thriller that has a cyber angle to it, in this case, it's about predator drones, unmanned predator vehicles. It's incredible. It's exciting. It's and literally, I know, it's hard to believe it's as good as Demon and Freedom. You can get this book for free right now. If you go to Audible Podcast, I know, wait a minute, I just said it, free, audiblepodcast.com. Don't worry, Daniel gets his cut. It's, it doesn't take any money out of his pocket. Audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. You're going to sign up for the gold account. That's a book a month, a credit a month. This book is one credit, so you get to download the book immediately. You'll be, you'll be listening in an hour. And if you decide it's not for me, cancel at any time, it costs you nothing, the book is yours to keep. But I think you're going to want to stick around. It's the best audio bookstore ever, over 100,000 titles. Audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. I'm telling you, you're going to love it. 
All right, let's walk over. I got Chad Johnson on the camera doing a great job, Chad. We're going to walk over to the living room set and say hello to uh, the studio manager here at Twit. We don't see enough of this guy on camera. I'm just such a big fan. <laughs> I'm such a big fan. We couldn't do what we do without John Slanina. Good to see you, John. Leo. Ah, relax. Uh, so, relax a bit. Now, C. Crane's been around for a long time. Very familiar with them. You hear their ads on the radio. They make radios. Yes. Um, that they. I didn't know this. They apparently also make headphones. They do, and earbuds. Well, what do you think? You're our audio guru. Well, here are the, I think they're called the Centra 40 wooden headphones. That's wild. They have wood. They're made out of wood. They have wood. So, you know, I have some wooden earbuds, too. Why wood? What do you get? Why? Just because well, it looks good? That is the selling point uh, right <laughs> now. Um, there may be an audible difference. Uh, some, some people say that, you know, it's like a enough. wooden guitar versus a, yeah. a metal body guitar. It resonates uh, a little warmer, warmer, more warmly. Yeah. yeah. Well, what did you think? Well, I liked it. I mean, let's talk about the wood. I, All right. It's, it's an interesting phenomenon that's going on now is... Um, Return the, to analog. <laughs> right? No. <laughs> the... Um, the way the headphones look seems to be important. Oh, you're in right. Them. You know, did you Not watch so the Olympics? They're all wearing Beats with all the different colors. Yeah. It really is about the style, isn't it? Right. As much so, as so these are nice looking headphones. It's not very important to me, and they sound good. I really like the way they sound. Really? All right. Um, and they're they're, they're on ear, not over, not over ear exactly. Right, on ear. Yeah. Uh, they're comfortable. Um, they look good. Look at that. They look more like you should be smoking a pipe than you should be swimming the 400 uh, meter. You know, I restaurant. usually am not near a mirror when I'm listening <laughs> to music, so I'm not so concerned with how they look. Okay, all right. I do want to add that they perform really well at high volume. If you crank them up, they, they do perform well. There's a unusual cable, though. If you look at this cable... This is another trend, is the detachable cable. And that's because you've got both stereos and phones and uh ipods right so there's all different kinds of connectors and so this, you can get a cable with a microphone ah i like would, that uh, so this could be mute switch your phone so it's got the dual uh cable it's got the smaller uh phono jack uh for uh that actually probably goes into the if phones notice, right there are three jacks there three jacks. one for each set of phone and there is no left right designation obviously there can't be on the headphones themselves because you could put either wire into either ear oh, so that's it's not interesting. clear to me which way you're supposed to wear them um, oh. i have to you know put pan something to the left and right to make sure i've put them on correctly it never says anywhere left or right you can you know, put a dot of uh, fingernail polish on the <laughs> left you shouldn't have cable. to do that uh, or and it makes me think that maybe people aren't too concerned. I'm sorry, about I, my my, my watch was just tweeting me. Just ignore that. <laughs> I'll explain that in a minute. Um, so good. And what is it? Uh, did you use these with head with a telephone? How did that work? No, no, I don't have that. The uh, you don't have a telephone. I just listen to music. I was just All listening right. to music and podcasts. All right. So you do plug. Okay, I get it. So I plug it these little ones into both of these, and then this goes into uh, my phone. Whatever you're gonna plug yeah, it into. Yeah. Got it. Right? Got it. Got it. So, or my or my watch, you know, I actually oh. can plug these into my watch there. All right. So there the mic. Oh, you, you hey, rocking. So they are comfortable. They don't fit very tight. You know, other headphones I wear are a little bit snugger on my face, which can be a problem if you're a headbanger. You know? How's the bass response? You know, we, we, we all talk about beats a lot. The low end sounded very good. It did sound good. Um, not as good as my $200 headphones, but I enjoyed it quite a bit. What I did notice is if you are listening at loud volume, because they're not very snug on your head, they kind of bounce with the beat. You know, the low notes and the kick drum, they go boop, boop, boop. So that is one of my cons. <laughs> Let me try calling somebody and just see. There's no microphone. This, oh, this doesn't have a microphone? No, that's a different cable. Oh, that's a different one. Okay. Oh, and uh, same with the uh, earbuds we're going to talk about in just a minute. How much? Uh, they retail for $60. I see them on Amazon for $55. All right. Now let's talk about the uh, earbuds. I'd like to be specific about my pros and cons, though, with All the right. headphones. And to do the, the pros and cons on the headphones first. So the, the pros are they it sounds really good for its price. Uh, they're quite comfortable, and they perform well at uh, high volume. The cons are no left-right designation anywhere. That's kind of That's weird, weird to me, and yeah. I certainly want to have them on properly. Right. Um, they're comfortable, but they're also loose. So if you're headbanging 
or nodding your head, moving your head around a lot, they, they, they're not going to stay on your head very well, right. at least for me. Also, because they're loose, they seem to vibrate with the beat at loud volumes. Right. So right. those are the three cons. All right. So now we have the Senta 9 earbuds. These are, they're over there. Yeah, they're, they're, they're hidden. The, so the Senta 9 earbuds, I was quite surprised with these, at the quality of the sound. They sound quite good for their price. I, um, these are, for these example, are kind of sort of in ear. They're not all the way in the ear. They have those little, a lot of headbuds, uh, earphones now are doing this kind of. Sm they're in between earbuds and in ear monitors. They're kind and they're of clearly in left and right. Uh, they are marked, and they seal pretty well, so they're isolating. Um, and for twice the price, you can get the Apple in ear headphones. I don't think they sound as good. I think they sound better than the. These uh, are less than the Apples. Well, these are thirty-five dollars. That's not bad at all. Yeah. Um, Let's see what I have for the uh, pros and cons of the earbuds. You mind if I, I put these on? Uh, if you don't mind, I've been wearing them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Ear diseases. So <laughs> the pros are they, they sound great and they fit well. They stay in place and they are good for isolating your uh, hearing from noises outside. The cons are there's a lot of wire noise. If we if you're moving around, you can yeah. really, the wire transmits yeah. the noise a little too strong. It comes with a clip. So you can clip the wire onto your shirt or something, and that will help. And I, and I notice a button on here. Is that doing anything? Mute. That's and, the mute. And this okay. also comes in a version with, with a, a microphone. Mic. Okay, for a little more money, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, it doesn't repel moisture as well as earbuds. Generally, I would use earbuds for exercising. Right. As opposed to going outside with big on-air headphones. Right. And it took me a while to find earbuds that I like that don't have a problem with sweat. You know, and these I wore. These they would kind of fall they, out. And, they, yeah. they they get really wet. Yeah, they're uh, still they actually get a little damp. This these Sennheisers uh, actually work really well. They cost twice as much and maybe don't but sound as good. But they go over good. the ear. But the way they're designed, they can't fall off. Regardless of how right. sweaty I get, I don't have the problem with the moisture in my ear, which can be really irritating with earbuds. So a con, bad for sweaty. Doesn't retain but uh, moisture. I, Thirty-five bucks and a better no, sound, they sound than the Apple in here is that's so, a good deal. So my suggestion is try, depending right. on your application. If you're going to be listening to these in your car or on a train, right. they're great. If you're going to be exercising, you might want to try them. They aren't for me in terms of uh, vigorous physical activity. So uh, try on both of these then. No, no, I would recommend you buy these because they sound really good for the price. Okay. So buy on the Senta. Uh, those are the nine. I'm sorry, the Senta 40 wooden headphones <laughs> as a buy, and the Senta 9 earbuds a try. Very good, John Slanina, our studio manager. You may have these all back. Thank, thank you. you so much, and thank you for the great job uh, you do. I really uh, appreciate it. And it's I, a lot of fun. Yeah. Now I'm going to talk about. You saw me playing with it a little bit. My watch. This is uh, the I Am Watch. You probably saw, and I did. In fact, I even kicked into. The Pebble watch on the Kickstarter, that's a watch they raised millions of dollars to make a watch that would tie into an Android phone. And I think everybody here got the idea from the uh, iPod Nano wristbands people made that gave you a chance to use your iPod Nano as a watch. Well, this is the first of, I suspect, a generation of watches that are designed to work with a phone. This will work with an iPhone or an Android. I've tied it to the Android phone. Now, your internet connection comes from the Bluetooth connection from the phone. It tethers. So it's really, I, I probably wouldn't recommend this for anybody who doesn't have a tethering plan on their phone. Um, it has apps. Uh, the apps you uh, connect to Facebook, Twitter, your Google Calendar, your uh, Google um, uh, Photos on Picasa, on the web. So you have to log into the website, register the watch. But once you've registered it, uh, it actually downloads data from these places. I was able to get my address book, for instance, off of my phone. Um, so you can actually make phone calls from here. It has a phone interface, and I've actually been able to dial numbers on here. It has uh, a music player. It has photos, Twitter, Facebook. And you can see it even has notifications. There it is on the uh, website. It has notifications. I've just, just, just as you would with, like this is running Android. You slide down the notifications and you can see, oh yeah, I've got some Facebook uh, messages. I've got some tweets from Twitter and you can actually read these. Uh, this is my Twitter stream 
on the watch. Now, uh, as you can see, it's it's kind of big. It's ungainly. It does come in a variety of colors. Let me. Uh, the pros on this is well, it's the first. If you've been looking for a watch that uh, can tie to your phone, it will notify you about calendar updates. If the phone rings, notice it has an earphone jack, and so you can actually use this not only to connect to the phone but to make phone calls. Uh, that's pretty cool. It also is a kind of a, well, I guess styling is uh, in the eye of the beholder, kind of a cool-looking watch. I like the variety of colors. But there are far more cons to outweigh the pros. The audio quality on this is very poor. It clicks and pops if you've got headphones in. I found it very difficult to pair to my phones. Never did get it working with the iPhone. Uh, finally, to get it working with my Android Galaxy S3. Very slow to download the address book. Took almost an hour to download the few thousand uh, names and addresses that I had in my phone book. I guess you could do that overnight. Also, you have to charge this up. It comes with a USB cable and a little mini jack that you plug into the watch. And it doesn't really last all day, which is kind of a negative for a wrist watch. You'll be charging it every night uh, for sure. Uh, the screen's good, though. I mean, another pro, the, the, the screen is actually a pretty good-looking, very legible uh, screen. I think they've done a nice job with that. Um, another con is the price, $350. Uh, it costs more than my phone uh, did. So if you really want to be the first on your block to have a wristwatch that ties to your phones, this is the one. This is it. But as you can see, I've only used it for a few minutes and already the battery is starting to go down. It isn't a practical uh, wristwatch. It's a cool wristwatch, nicely designed from an Italian company. The manuals are very scant. Three or four pages in the printed manual that came in uh, with the, in the box. I went to the website, and there wasn't much more there as well. Some of it's a little bit wonky. I've, they've already sent out a couple of firmware updates since I've been reviewing it. You know, I can't say buy it. I have to say don't buy Um but there are those of you, and you know who you are, who will buy it anyway just because you want to be the first in the block to look like you're on a work furlough program with your wristwatch. <laughs> That's the, the I am watch. It's a nice Italian watch from an Italian design. I'm watch. Um, you know what? I have to say, having used this now, I'm very nervous about the Pebble because the Pebble is going to have many of the same issues. It's just very difficult uh, to do a, a Bluetooth device in your wrist um, that does all the things you want. We'll have to we'll have to wait and see, and I'll certainly review the Pebble when it comes out. Well, that's it for Before You Buy. Thanks to our reviewers, uh, Jason Howell from uh, All About Android and TNT, Father Robert Balliser of This Week in Enterprise Tech, our own studio manager, John Slanina. You can catch long-form versions of all the reviews on our Twit uh, YouTube channel, youtube.com slash twit. Email us if you've got something you'd like us to review, byb at twit.tv. Thanks to Nicole for uh, Nicole Lee for uh, producing the show, getting all the stuff in here and divvying it out. We actually fought over this watch, and now there's a bunch of people glad they didn't have to review it. <laughs> I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks for joining us. Remember, you got to watch before you buy. We'll see you next time.